Welcome back to everything. I'm Burning Dog Face, and despite my dislike of autoplay, my scallop is wandering around on its own. There's an ant back here. Can I be that guy? He seemed chill. What? How about the armadillo? What does that say? Armadillo. Armadillos are, uh, oh, <clears throat> how do I get, oh, it's, oh, that's the entire thing, I can't select it. Armadillos are New World placental mammals with a leathery armor shell. The word armadillo means a little armored one in Spanish. Their average length is about 75 centimeters, 30 inches, including tail. All species are native to the Americas, where they inhabit a variety of different environments. Be, you know, let's be the shell again. That was sand chunk. basically anything, except for all the things I want to do. Like take control of everything around here and make it do whatever I want. Count your blessings, I guess. I wouldn't call that a descent. Oh. Oh! I'm a little fertility idol. I've seen these. Some of the earliest known human... Uh, art. See, she's got a pregnant belly and, uh... A large bust. Watch, may be totally wrong about this, but that's okay. Venus of Willendorf, now known in academia as the Woman of Willendorf, is an 11.1 centimeter, 4.4 inches, high statuette of a female figure estimated to have been made between about 28,000 and 25,000 BCE. It was found in 1908 by a workman named Johann Verin, or Josef Veram, <laughs> during excavations conducted by archaeologists Josef Zambathi, Hugo Obermeyer, and Josef Bayer at a Paleolithic site near Willendorf, a village in Lower Austria, near the town of Krems. It is carved from an oolitic, yeah, that's the word, limestone that is not local to the area and tinted with red ochre. The figurine is now in the Natur... Naturhistoriches... I assume that's German or something. Museum in Vienna, Austria. Uh, is Austrian a language? I haven't the slightest idea. Several similar statuettes and other forms of art have been discovered, and they are collectively referred to as Venus figurines, although they predate the mythological figure of Venus by millennia. Hmm. Do I have a mouse? No, I cannot. I wonder if I can click on that. It would be really inconvenient to open my browser right now. I'm just saying. What is that? I find it a little difficult to say what the subject matter of this seminar is going to be, Off because it's too fundamental to give it a title. I'm going to talk about what there is. Now, the first thing, though, uh, that we this. have to do is to get our perspectives with some background about the basic ideas which influence our everyday common sense our fundamental notions about what life is about. Ideas of the world, which are built into the very nature of the language we use, and of our ideas of logic, and of what makes sense altogether. 
And these basic ideas I call myth, not using the word myth to mean simply something untrue, but to use the word myth in a more powerful sense. A myth is an image in terms of which we try to make sense of the world. Excuse me. Okay. Holy shit, I really am tiny. I am this plant. Oh. I'm sprouting across the land. You are wild barley. My purpose in life is to stay in bed. Nice and snug, all the way to the grave. Good luck finding yours, and don't copy me. I can't look up that high. Oh. I thought I was just going to stay in the middle. I have to move the thing around with the other stick. Oh, man. that decision. You are Camel. Now let's be Camel for a while. Unless I can be Bird. I cannot be Bird. I could be Tree. I want to be that thing mystifies me, is it's the only thing I don't understand from what I've seen. Aside from the gameplay mechanics, of course, that's a, a given. I understand a dromedary camel. Well, now I'm a cactus. San Pedro Cactus. Excuse me, Zebra, do you have the time? The Zebra does not care. This unit does not care. I was distantly curious if I was just leaving a trail of cacti behind me. Because that would be kind of a dick move. Zebra has a uh, thing to say to me. Pardon me. You, as a human being, you grow out of this physical universe in just exactly the same way that an apple grows off an apple tree. So let's say the tree which grows apples is a tree which apples, using apple as a verb. Okay. And a world in which human beings arrive is a world that peoples. Hmm. And so the existence of people is symptomatic of the kind of universe we live in. Just as hair on a head is symptomatic of what's going on in the organism. But we have been brought up not to feel that we belong in the world. So our popular speech reflects it. We say, I came into this world. You didn't. You came out of it. We say, face facts. We talk about encounters with reality. As if it was a head-on meeting of completely alien agencies. And the average person has the sensation that he is a somewhat that exists inside a bag of skin. 
the center of consciousness, which looks out at this thing, what the hell is it going to do to me? Uh, I recognize you. You kind of look like me, and uh, I've seen myself in a mirror, and uh, you, you look like you might be people. <laughs> so maybe you're intelligent. Maybe you can love, too. And uh, maybe perhaps you're all right. Some of you are, anyway. You've got the right color of skin, or you have the right religion, or whatever it is, you're OK. But there are all those people over in Asia, Africa, and they may not really be people. When you want to destroy someone, you always define them as unpeople. That took a turn. There wasn't this much sun last spring. Someone owes me an explanation. Where did that big old tree go? I wanted to be that tree. There he is. Oop. I'm totally okay with this en uh, enter mode. Thank you. You are Kit Fox. I've been kind of ignoring the cheese for a while. The eyes always get me. Oh no. Hmm. Am I really going to read about Barley? Yes, I am. Barley is a member of the grass family. It is a self-pollinating diploid species with 14 chromosomes. The wild ancestor of domesticated barley, uh, unnecessary comma, is abundant in grasslands and woodlands throughout the fertile crescent area of Western Asia and Northeast Africa, and is abundant in disturbed habitats, roadsides, and orchards. Outside this region, the wild barley is less common, and is usually found uh, in disturbed habitats. Uh, however, in a study of genome-wide diversity markers... Tibet was found to be an additional center of domestication of cultivated barley. Don't spin that fast. Wild barley has a brittle spike. Upon maturity, the spikelets separate, facilitating seed dispersal. Domesticated barley has a non-shattering spikes, making it much easier to harvest the mature ears. When was I other? Oh. A very small ball of sand. Not worth very much, but beautiful up close. Everything is narrated by the great British-American philosopher Alan Watts, 1915 to 1973. Watts is a prolific writer, speaker, interpreter, and popularizer of Eastern philosophy in the West. The talks represented here were recorded between 1965 and 1973. Hmm. I thought a kit fox is just an immature fox. Hmm. Now I know. Acacia. Good day to you. Nope, I'm not even going to look this time. Dare I wonder? Mm, not yet. Excuse me down there. I live by one simple rule. The rest stone like you are, the less likely I am to beat you up. I'm flying now. I feel too small. I'll be whatever that is. I'm a zebra now. I heard a while ago that it's actually pronounced zebra. I couldn't run until I did that. What are you? Oh, a goat. I have a 
lot of experience being a goat. Dare I wonder? No, this is silly. I'll just get the entry and then... Yeah, it's much less silly. Do I belong here? I don't really know where my home is supposed to be. I guess I can make it wherever I want. Is that a good sound? You are Rattlesnake. Oh no. What have I done? Now they're traveling in packs. I have an amazing imagination for everything except my own. Inevitable non-existence. Oh. Well, I know where I'm not wanted. I'm sorry, I know where we are not wanted. I am a plural entity now, of course. Oh, there's an idea. What if a person wanted to go by they because they were a plural entity? That wasn't very offensive. My apologies if anyone took that uh, harshly. I meant it as a very strange thought, not as uh, not to poke fun at anyone. No. Oh. Hello, giraffe. Do you like me? Draft does not seem to like us either. We'll be on our way then. Are you more of us? No. I just hope we don't find any mongooses. Mongoose? I hope we don't encounter a mongoose. Oh, that's what that is. They don't cover ground very quickly, even when I'm holding down A. Oh, a turtle. Give me a moment. Oh, he's very energetic for a turtle. Your tortoise, my mistake. That's right, turtles are the swimmy ones. Oh, my friend is gone. I am a singular entity once more. Where'd that guy go? There he is. Pardon me, do you have any gray poupon? We have this hostility to the external world because of the superstition, the myth, the absolutely unfounded theory that you yourself exist only inside your skin. Now, I want to propose another idea altogether. Billions of years ago, you were a big bang. But now, you're a complicated human being. But so, we define ourselves as being only that. If you think that you are only inside your skin, you define yourself as one very complicated little curly cue, way out on the edge of that explosion, way out in space and way out in time. 
And we, then we cut ourselves off and don't feel that we're still the Big Bang. But you are. Depends how you define yourself. You are actually, if, if this is the way things started, if there was a Big Bang in the beginning, you're not something that is a result of the Big Bang. You're not something that is a sort of puppet on the end of the process. You are still the process. You are the Big Bang, the original force of the universe coming on as whoever you are. See, when I meet you, I see not just what you define yourself as, Mr. So-and-so, Miss So-and-so, Mrs. So-and-so. I see every one of you as the primordial energy of the universe coming on at me in this particular way. I know I'm that too. But we've learned to define ourselves as separate from it. The world loops around. An interesting discovery to uh, end this video on. I'm Burning Dog Face, and uh, we'll continue this exploration of everything next time. Later.